The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. Our special guest today is Danielle Kruger, the School Outreach Coordinator for H2O for Life. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much for uh, joining us today for our program. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, the first question that I have is, could you give me a brief summary of exactly what H2O for Life is? Yeah, so H2O for Life is a program that works with students in the local uh, area and also around the United States that develops global citizens. Um, and so we partner local schools with schools around the world to help sponsor wells and water projects. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. great. And so you work then with uh, White Bear School District mm -hmm. and any of the others right around the uh, White Bear area? Yeah, we work in a lot of schools in the Twin Cities area. Um, specifically in White Bear, we are working on a race to reduce curriculum, which is more locally right. focused. Um, but then we also have some of those schools like Matoska International that works on our global projects as well. Okay, so the school districts around this area would be White Bear... Uh, we've worked with White, Bla White Bear, Matamidi, Eden Prairie, um, the St. Paul Public School oh, District, okay. Minneapolis. Yeah. Wonderful. That's uh, that's a lot. Yeah. To take on. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about uh, your uh, part of H2O for Life. So my role with H2O for Life um, is I'm the school outreach coordinator, and so I work primarily with our teachers um, that are joining our program, so either entering in for the first year or teachers who have already worked with us for a number of years, um, and we work on developing curriculum for the classroom. Um, mm -hmm. So attaching this global focus of the water crisis and how our students can be involved in solving that um, to their standards and what they're doing in the classroom. Okay, so when you talk about you work with the uh, curriculum, yeah, exactly what are some aspects of that? Yeah, so a teacher would come to us and say we're really interested in implementing service into our classroom. Um, and we really want it to meet the state standard that we're focusing on. And so our staff at H12 for Life will develop some curriculum around that that has a service component directly attached, um, but then is also meeting the standards of that classroom. And when you mean social component, what does that mean? Uh, the service component? Yeah. That would be the kids get to adopt a school around the world. So we, have, we partner in about 13 different countries, and then they get to adopt a school and help sponsor a water project at that school. Okay. And you mentioned both White Bear and Matamita. I mean, those are the two school districts that are closest to our mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples of some of the projects that uh, those two school districts might be involved in? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, Matoska International is one of our returning schools, and they work with us um, every other year for their programming. And so what their school does is they implement a walk for water where the kids get to um, take water down to the lake. Um, and this okay. is a, a raising awareness event. For the local conservation efforts. For the local conservation right, efforts. Right. Okay, so for that, that would be a race to reduce curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and that's implemented K through six um, in all the White Bear Lake schools. Mm -hmm. And so with that, sixth grade right now actually is in just the beginning phases. We're in the piloting phase. It'll be completed sure. this spring. Um, but they are looking at local water conservation, um, how they can be a part of that solution in White Bear Lake specifically. Yep. Any, uh, have you, have, have any of the uh, schools in our area adopted of any of the other um, schools in other countries? Have they done anything in that aspect? Um, yeah, so there's been a White Bear Lake, or White Bear Lake High School South. Um, has been a part of it. We've had two community leaders, so two students from that area, that have led um, walks in White Bear Lake for many years. They actually just graduated last year. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have, like I said, Montoska International. Um, we have had Lincoln Elementary School, who's also done it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a number of White Bear Lake schools who have been a part of H2O for Life's global portion as well. And what uh, what are some of the things that they might do uh, with, the, with the connections or collaborations with these other uh, schools around the world? Yeah, so we have a digital platform that they can 
go online and choose oh. to adopt their school. And on yep. that platform, they have um, photos of the school and the students that attend that school. And so they'll be able to see where are these students currently accessing their water. Right. Um, and then there's also a bio or a story about that school that shows them how sponsoring or funding that project is going to benefit the community. Excellent. Um, and so uh -huh. they take that information and then they plan different events to be a part of the solution, so raising the funds And, and, and so what might be some of the things that they do? You mentioned they, uh, do they, do they raise money for the other uh, school? And, and how does that help the uh, water issues with the other school that you're ta schools that you're talking about? And what are some of the things, so the benefits that some of the schools outside of the United States might get because of the work with H two O for Life. Yeah. I know that's a lot of questions, <laughs> but there's a lot from of what layers. you can remember, <laughs> uh, if you could answer that, it yeah. would be great. So uh, what our local schools are doing, they're raising awareness yep. and they're raising funds. Um, okay. So when the funds are sent to our global schools, what's going to happen is, dependent on the project, there's going to be wells that are built, rainwater catchment stations, okay. hand washing stations. Um, and we specifically work at schools for the yeah. goal that when a water project is built at a school, it's statistically proven that attendance at that school is going to increase. So they're like sanitary issues too yeah. then at the yep. schools. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah. So ultimately our goal is, not only just to promote the health of these students that are attending yeah. the schools, um, but to eliminate the time that these kids have to walk for water. Um, so rather than walking for water, they're going to be able to go to school, really? access their water yeah. there. Um, and so that's, you know, our local students are a part yeah. of those initiatives. You know, really, really caught my attention about uh, this program that you mentioned is uh, local fundraising efforts. So yeah. could you say that, that some of the fundraising might be uh, grassroots fundraising? for uh, where students, you mentioned that, do students get involved in raising the funds for uh, the schools then? Yeah, definitely. So all of our programming um, for our school-to-school -school partnerships is led by students. Right. Um, so like I said, we have these two high school students that were at White Bear Lake, um, and they would lead a walk every summer, and that would raise awareness so in the local area. So they'd organize walks. Yes. Yep. So they do the planning and the organizing, um, but that's just one example. There's so uh -huh. many different things that students have done. And they'll, like, like they walk, and it would be like uh, 10 cents a mile or something like that. That's what you're, it, it's different yeah. things. So some students do, you know, you have to pledge to be able to participate in the walk. You have okay. to get so many pledges. Um, some people sell tickets, and it's a big community event. We actually had in Shakopee High School, they did a big wow. walk for water, and they had community members. They reached out to donors and had them donating yeah. some funds for that. Um, so it's a lot of getting our youth um, involved with yep. that philanthropy. So looking to how do we raise these funds um, yeah. to support people around the world. That helps build the whole person, too. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, we have um, a new action that's in process of it's called our social entrepreneurship program um oh okay that we provide small mini grants for students to implement service and so wow. giving them that seed money um, because we believe it's really essential now you know this is a, we're a chamber and a business organization but yeah. that really catches my attention because yeah. you're uh, a lot of what you mentioned could probably have an effect on these uh, young people, when they become adults and they want to maybe become an entrepreneur yeah. or a social entrepreneur, mm -hmm. this type of a venue can help develop that. Is that Would that be a correct assumption? That's definitely our goal. I mean, ultimately, our mission is to develop global citizens, and part of that is to prepare students to go into a workforce that is going to be um, diverse, and they're going to have to learn how and to... Learn uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back again to the White Bear Lake and the Montemedi uh, school districts, mm -hmm. can you, uh, are you aware of any of the uh, schools outside of the United States that these two districts potentially have had a relationship with? Um, I, they definitely have. I couldn't tell you specifically okay, right. the name of the school yeah, at yeah. the moment, but yes. What mm -hmm. are some of the countries that the, uh, that these uh, other schools are located around the, yeah. the world? Yeah. Um, so we work a lot in East African areas as well as Latin America and Asia. Um, so oh. it's a, a wide variety. We really want kids to know that the global water crisis impacts yeah. everyone, um, uh -huh. not just specific areas. Okay. Now, uh, what is your background? So my background is in education. I okay. taught for a couple years and then transferred over to H2O for Life. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 
really quite a uh, quite a uh, change in in career options. Yeah. It is in some senses, um, but I <clears throat> still work a lot with the education system, a lot with teachers. Yep. Um, definitely just more focused on the service component. Um, okay. And obviously not leading my own classroom. So. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, getting uh, getting back, I wanted to ask a couple more questions about uh, the program. Yeah. Uh, do you have any understanding of what the number of students that have been involved in the H2O uh, for Life program uh, it would be uh, within the uh, communities uh, surrounding White Bear? So I actually don't have the exact number of the communities yeah, surrounding uh, yeah, White Bear. Uh, we work all over the United States, and so we've worked oh, with hundreds okay. of thousands of students. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. How about within just the White Bear School District? Are there, is there a lot of participation? There is a lot of participation. So as I said, the Race to Reduce curriculum is implemented in all of the White Bear Lake K-6 through six okay. schools. Um, and then we are working on now the 7, 8, and the pre-K if we get funding for it. Um, but then we also have done a lot of international projects with White Bear Lake schools as well. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned that H2O for Life isn't just a White Bear Lake program. Yeah. I mean, by that I mean it's, it's, uh, you, it's national. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have uh, schools all over, all over the country yes. that are involved in it. Yep, yep. So at, at some point or the other, we've worked in almost every state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So have you gotten any, uh, I know that your, your fundraising parts are probably diverse mm -hmm. based on grants, based on some of the grassroots work that the students do. And I know that, that H2O for Life also got some, some funding from the state of Minnesota mm -hmm. uh, for a grant for uh, Race to Reduce, I think it mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. Is that still in effect? And are you looking for, uh, I'm going to ask you for some other funds, not only from the state but locally, what are some of the opportunities that people might have if they're interested in, in working with your uh, H2O for Life programs? Yeah, so uh, the grant from the state is kind of in limbo right now. Um, that's definitely in a process, so we are um, waiting for bills to pass and things to move in that direction okay. um, for the Race to Reduce curriculum. Um, uh, in other ways that people could support, like I mentioned, our social entrepreneurship program, we're always looking for support on that end um, for people to fund those that seed money for students to, mm -hmm. to plan and implement their own um, fundraisers. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so you have the, the funding that comes from a whole variety yeah. of different, yeah. uh, yep. different venues. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the other programs that H2O for Life does, you mentioned a few of them uh, coming in. So I know you have the program with White Bear Lake where they train students to uh, become better uh, people working with water conservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that as kind of a crisis issue mm -hmm. uh, in working with these other schools. Can you explain a little bit what is meant by uh, water being a crisis issue? and how, uh, in a more broad-based sense, H2O for Life is, is looking at that? Yeah, I, I think it's really important for our students to know that water is a shared resource um, and that they're the next generation that's going to be educating people about that. Sure. And so that's one of our main missions is to, um, to teach these kids what is the water in their own backyard, how uh -huh. can they protect it and conserve it, um, and why is that conservation important on a global scale. Uh-huh. And when you when you talk about the uh, the programs uh, and and how it's it's important on a global scale, H two O for Life vision started when? Do you know when the, when basically a little bit of historical perspective? On yeah. So the Patty Hall, program? Patty Hall, our founder. Um, had some relationships with people in Kenya and they reached out to her and said we have kids dying from a lack of access to water um, and so at that point she um, brought this to her students she was teaching at the time and she said what can we do about this um, and her school raised funds for a well um, and not only did she see wow this was so successful in the raising funds for the well but the impact it had on her students and the community at her school um, it was a ripple effect of things like empathy and things like kids taking initiative and caring for others. Uh -huh. um, and so from that point forward, the, the same person who had originally come to her said, can you get 10 more schools on board sure. with you? Um, and that's kind of how I Shoot for Life came to be. It was, a, it was originally looking at that, that water crisis, yeah. um, but then as Patty worked with her students, she realized 
uh, this is something that all kids should have the opportunity to do and uh -huh. it has an incredible impact on the culture of local schools. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and is White Bear Lake then the uh, kind of the headquarters for H2O for Life? It, it is where, so we actually began at Highview Middle School, which is in Mound Sioux. Um, okay. That's where Patty was teaching, but Patty is originally from White Bear Lake, and okay. so we are based out of White Bear Lake, and we have worked, like I said, with a lot of the White Bear Lake community okay. to so, work on these issues. So some mm -hmm. of the other uh, programs that, uh, that H2O for Life is involved in, beyond what you do and beyond the conservation mm -hmm. programs that are involved with the local school district. Can you mention a couple of the other areas that H2O for Life uh, is involved with? Um, so, yeah. Can you clarify, do you mean like, so we focus on glo global and we focus on local conservation? Uh, uh, more on the uh, global issues. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the schools, are there any other uh, areas that the uh, that H Tool for Life focuses their attention on. Um, so ultimately, our main focus is that our students are uh -huh. taking local and global action to help solve the global yes, water and crisis. And it goes all the way through high school. And it goes all the way through high school. So we work with K through 12 students uh -huh. um, and all over the United States. And so some of our kids, you know, are from Michigan, and their local focus is focusing more on that the Flint issues, um, where you have oh they do. oh really so that would yeah. be they would be focusing on their local water issues. So while our students here are White Bear Lake, and they're focusing on the issues surrounding White Bear Lake areas in their local learning, then they're taking that global action. And so we really try and fine tune it to what what, what the local are doing. Uh, what the mm -hmm. local area is. So yeah, if you've got yeah. water pollution issues in, in Flint, Michigan, yeah. then the students then would be uh, would be looking at, at that particular uh, venue there. For their local focus, yeah, yes. That's, and then they uh, would that's be that's really interesting. How do uh, because you are uh, focused with all of these different schools around mm -hmm. the country uh, how do how how does your communication system work so that you can um, uh, keep track of all of the things that are going on with your small staff? Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. I um, bet there are, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, and we do you know email communication, phone communication, webinars, Skypes, classroom visits. Um, it's a wide variety depending on the needs of the schools and. We have schools we've been working with for 10 years who say, don't bug me, we know what we're doing, we have it all figured out. Um, and then we have schools that are brand new and they're saying, we've never tried service and we really, we would love your help. Mm -hmm. So it's a real, uh, it's, it's kind of, when somebody starts something, it's to kind of grow on their own then yeah, yep, around. Yep. So you are kind of implement mm -hmm. the programs and then the other, the schools around the country then take those and yep. move forward and develop it on their own yep, yep. structures. So, yeah, and because yep. a teacher is going to have their own needs with their own students. And so we can develop something, but they're always sure. going to have to put their taste yep. and touch into it because... Yeah, that's interesting. That's education. <laughs> now, uh, if somebody is interested yeah. in connecting with uh, H2O for Life, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, so we have our website, um, h2oforlifeschools.org, um, and on there we have all of our contact information. If they are a school, um, I would be the best contact for them. Okay. If they're a funder, we have our development director, which would be a great contact for them. And they mm -hmm. have other, they have venues for that. Uh, you yeah. have a, you also have a annual gala, is that right? Where yep. you use to raise some of your money. Yep, yep. A water, we have our water ball in, in September, September 22nd. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> yep. So those are some of the things that you do. Yeah. Well, yep. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now I have a quick announcement about important chamber community happenings. Lindsay Whalen, the new women's basketball coach for the University of Minnesota, will be our guest speaker at our annual meeting. She is a four-time Olympic gold medal winner and was the premier women's basketball player for the Minnesota Lynx. She will appear on January 25th at Keller Golf Course. Lunch and program run from 12 to 1.30 p.m. For more information on this event, visit our website at www.whitebearchamber.com. You've been watching Your Business Matters. 
For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.